Good morning, First Baptist. We are certainly grateful to God to be here today to celebrate the Lord's Supper on this first Sunday of the new year. We're talking about 2023. Can we thank God just to be in his presence one more time? This is an exciting time for all of us, simply because of the fact this is a year of new beginnings. And we need to begin anew. In fact, Jesus introduced something new to his disciples in terms of the Lord's Supper. Uh, they used to take the manna. They used to meet in Jerusalem, if you will. Uh, once a year, he would go back with his family. You remember when he was 12 years old? They went back and to celebrate what the Lord had done for them and bringing them out of slavery. But well, in this particular situation, on this particular night, Jesus met with his disciples in what they call the upper room to uh, introduce to them a new covenant in his body and in his blood. The Bible tells us that he took some bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, for as often as you eat this bread, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup of wine. He said, take and drink all of it. For well, this is the new covenant in my blood, the blood that's shed for your sins and the entire world. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. And in obedience to what the Lord Jesus Christ did, in obedience to his word, to, for us to do likewise, then we want to bless these elements that represent the body and the blood of Christ. Amen? And so, having said that, then let us bless these elements. And if you do this, if you do this, if you're a Christian today, then we encourage you to take this. If you need to forgive somebody, forgive them right now. If you have grudges against someone, uh, forgive them right now. And, and ask others to forgive you so that you can take this in a worthy manner. Let us bless these elements at this time. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for what Jesus did for us on the cross. Here it is another year, Lord, a beginning of a brand new year. We pray, dear Lord, that we take it worthily. And if we're not ready, then we'll bypass it, Lord, until we get our hearts right with you. We honor you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. We are having high expectations of mighty things that you're going to do this year. Bless these elements, Lord, that represent your body and your blood. Oh, we are not worthy, but thank you, Lord, for all that you do and have done. Bless them to our spirituality so that we can continue to grow in you. This is our prayer, and we ask it all. In the mighty name of Christ, our Lord, we indeed do pray. And let everybody say, amen. 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 Now we have a song as we pass out the elements of the, the Lord's body and blood. i 
blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood saved me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, save me, one day, I was lost. Jesus died, I know it was, he did say a moment he did say a moment word. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we commune together. This cup represents the blood that was shed for the sins of the entire world. For God so loved the world 
is that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. May we commune together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us once they finished, they went out to the Mount of Olives, but on their way they sang a hymn of praise. May we do likewise. Oh, it reaches to the highest Just last week, we witnessed a miracle. Well, and I want to tell you about it. I came out one day and I looked up at the roof of my house uh -huh. and I saw where some of the shingles had blown away. So I called this company and I told them I wanted them to come out and access the damage of the shingles being blown away and give me a price. So I was sitting around and we was waiting and waiting and waiting and I didn't see anyone that, that came by to do anything about it. 
And one day I, I, I walked out and, and I looked up and the shingles were replaced. Did you hear me? The shingles were replaced. But I hadn't seen anyone come by there. So I called the place up, she said. Then they sent me a message that same day and said that they sent, they sent me a, a price on how much it was going to cost. Did I want them to come out and do the work? And I said, the work is already done. And they said, well, I want me to fix it. And I said, well, hold on, let me, let me go outside and look again. And I went outside and I looked up again and the shingles was there. But nobody said that they fixed it. They called the, the, the guy who came out and checked it and he said that he didn't do any work. But the shingles is fixed. Nobody charged me anything for fixing it. No one said that they did it, but it's fixed. Amen. Now, I don't know what you call it, but I'm saying it's a miracle. That the shingles is replaced. And nobody came and told me that they did the work. The people still calling me, asking me, do I want them to do the work? And I say, it's already done. And they call me again. I say, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. It's already done. Now, I know some of y'all might be sitting out there saying that that ain't true. You know what I mean? But that's OK. That's OK. Because when miracles happen, a lot of times people don't believe them because they don't believe in miracles anymore. There is miracles happening today, but we call them coincidences, a misunderstanding or something that just happened that we don't understand. But you know what? God don't even hold that against you. He just hold it to our inability to trust him to our knowledge that we don't really understand God and his infinite wisdom, his understanding, his willingness to reach down and do things for us that we can't do for ourselves. I want to tell you, I don't know what you want to call it. I'm calling it a miracle. I am calling it a miracle because the shingles is fixed, y'all. I didn't have to pay a dime. Amen. Didn't have to pay a dime. Amen. I thank God. Amen. If you give me a moment, I want to just say, Jesus! 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 I thank you, Jesus! I want to start out right this year, praising my Lord and Savior for all of the goodness. Now, I don't know about you, but this is telling me that God got something in store for us and he's showing it already. Already. You better start believing in God. You better start trusting God. You better start asking God for what you want. Because you hear people saying that God is not moving and all that stuff, but God said you have not because you have not. And so you're not, you, you, you're not getting what you're looking for. You're suffering and not getting any relief. He said it's simply because you're not asking for it. And so you, if you ask, you shall receive. That's all I got to say. Amen. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning. I'm, I'm sorry, please stand. I 
Our scripture reading this morning is Philippians 3, verses 10 through 15. It begins with these words. I wanted to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow obtaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brethren and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, staring towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God had called me. How heavenly, heavenward, I'm sorry, heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a vow of things and if on some point you think differently that too God will make clear to you amen, amen. God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word if you don't mind would you please keep standing for prayer and let us go to God's throne Father God, in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, the one who thought it not robbery to come down and to hang on that old rugged tree and shed his blood that we might be through its blood, healed, saved, conditioned to walk worthily after him. We want to thank you, Lord, because we know that you didn't have to. But Lord, we assume that the reason why you well, because you could go back to the Father and you would be able to testify to him of the suffering that we go through. He wanted to have a first-hand experience of what we deal with day by day. So when God only knew spiritually found out physically what we deal with, the pressures that we undertake, the shame that is shed upon us from time to time, the pride that we feel when we become aware that you are our Lord and our Savior. You are our healer. You are will restore when we're broken and shattered. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you thought it not a shame to come down and hang on that old rugged, rugged tree and shed your blood for such a sinner as I. I say thank you. I say thank you, Jesus, because I 
love you to the depths of my soul. I love you for what you did way back on Calvary. You came down and you hung there on me. But the thing that I feel so dear about is that they couldn't take your life. You had to give it up. After you hung there for hours, oh Lord, until you felt that the deed was done, the debt was paid, you looked up to your father and you said, Father, it is finished. So therefore, I commend my spirit into thy hand. He had to give up life that we might be able to live. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. But most of all, thank you for the blood that washes us clean.
I trust that you had a wonderful Christmas holiday season and, uh, and all went well. Santa was real good to you. Praise the Lord. And I want to say Happy New Year to all of you that are here today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, hallelujah is the highest praise. We are so happy to be here on this first Sunday of the new year, January 1st, 2023. I'll tell you, that's something else. So you make sure when you make out your checks, don't put 22 on there because it's so easy to do that at the beginning of the year uh, because you're so used to writing that down. We want to uh, just say uh, good morning to you once again, and I want to thank uh, Reverend Billy Florence for his leadership uh, in terms of presiding over this service this morning. Now we want to do our each one reach one. That's going to be our thing for this year because I want to see some results of each one of us reaching somebody else. Somebody pulling somebody else into the life of the church. Somebody else witnessing to somebody who will say, hey, that's the soul that I led to the Lord. And so we're going to quote our each one reach one. We don't want to do this just for an exercise. We want to do this in reality because disciples make disciples. Amen. And the Lord didn't just commission the preachers, but all of us to do what we're getting ready to quote. So this is our commission to every one of us. So it's coming out of Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And we're going to say what it is. Say it with me. Each one, reach one. Each one of you can reach one. Let us quote the scripture together. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. I do want to let you know that I have the daily Bible reading calendars. We're running out. There are a few left. And if you're interested in reading through the Bible with the pastor this year, then it starts today. So if you pick one up at the end of service, read your first lesson for the day. It starts off with uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse, uh, chapter 1 and 2, and it goes on to uh, a Psalm 1, and then it goes to Proverbs 1, and then it goes to a New Testament, uh, Matthew 1 and 2. So you'll read uh, the Old Testament, Psalm, Proverbs, and New Testament scripture every single day. So again, this is the daily Bible reading calendar that we would love for you to read through the Bible with us. Pick one up today. See Rhonda Burke. We'll probably have them out front. You are welcome to pick one up, but we're about out of them. So you want to make sure you get it today so that you can start your reading. Also, I want to point out there are about three announcements inside the bulletin here. The first one talks about the uh, church conference that's going to be held on Sunday, January the 15th immediately after the morning service. Uh, see, please govern yourselves accordingly. We will be doing our year-end report, financial report, as well as, uh, as well as our budget for the upcoming year, uh, and maybe a couple of other items that will be coming forthcoming as well. 
Uh, keep in mind that the administrative team and finance office need updated information from each and every one of you. Uh, if your address is changed, phone number, cell phones, or whatever, uh, point of contact, we need that information as soon as possible. We need you to update your personal contact uh, information as quickly as you possibly can. You can go to First Baptist, our website, uh, and uh, or you can email it uh, to us. Make sure you take care of this as soon as possible. Also on there, you will see that the Cultural Arts Society of Fuquay Verena Incorporated will sponsor the annual celebration of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Um, and uh, the MLK March will take place uh, at uh, St. Augusta Missionary Baptist Church. That's where they will begin at, t at 10 a.m. On, uh, on the 16th of January, Monday the 16th. And it'll end at uh, Falcon Park, uh, Shelton. Shelter, rather. And uh, please, there will be musical guests, and there's a lot that's going to be going on. We want you to join us for that important event. Please join us for the Martin Luther King celebration. Our New Year's Eve service went extremely well last night. For those of you that didn't show up, y'all missed the treat. I tell you, that brother preached, and there was some good singing, and there was some good just praising the Lord. We had a good time. Uh, we ended it before 12 o'clock. I was expecting us to get through the 12 o'clock hour, but it, went, it, it ended before 12. But we celebrated in a special way, and I'm so grateful. Thanks to all of you that showed up for that. Uh, for those that are here, you know we had a good time in the Holy Ghost, did we not? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank those of you who contributed to the giving tree, the giving tree. Uh, the kids were blessed. Uh, I understand it was somewhere in the neighborhood unless the numbers went up. 27 uh, children who were blessed with uh, something, uh, the gifts for the holidays, the Christmas holidays, and, uh, and clothes as well as and toys. And we thank you for your contribution. And that's what it's all about. We just want to bring a smile to some kid's face. And we did. We had 27 of them. And uh, thank you for your contribution contribution in that regard. And also, just thank all of you for all that you've done. We've had a lot of funerals here recently, and the ushers, I want to thank you in particular, uh, and uh, just about uh, coming, and Rhonda, uh, the secretary, and everybody that played a part, uh, audiovisual, you name it, the deacons, everybody that played a part, thank you so much for your support. Uh, there's a lot of suffering going on and so forth. And continue to pray for our sick and shut-in, people on our sick and shut-in list. There have been some losses and some other names that came across our desk today uh, as well. Uh, Rhonda, just see uh, Reverend Wright and see uh, Deacon Florence to get those additional names. And um, I certainly would appreciate it so very much that you continue to pray for those that are on our sick and shut in list. At this time, as we continue to celebrate uh, this wonderful, wonderful day that the Lord has made, we want to bring this choir back up. They're going to bless us with a song, and then we're going to come with a word as the Lord has directed us.
God is my everything. Can I get a witness? Is God your everything? Oh, don't fool me now. I said, is God your everything? Hallelujah. If I can call your attention to the book of Philippians chapter uh, 3, Philippians chapter 3, if you will, verses 13 and 14. I'm going to read into your hearing out of the NIV version of the Bible. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And it reads as follows out of the NIV version of the Bible. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let us take a moment and go to the throne as we prepare our hearts for what God has to say to us. Father, we give you thanks today for your amazing grace. Oh, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like us. We once were lost, but now we found. We were blind, but now we see. Lord, we pray that you would speak by way of your spirit, that you would have your way right now, that you minister to every need in every heart, that you would save a soul, that you make somebody whole, that you would do something special, that you would comfort those who have lost loved ones recently that you minister to them in a special way. And Lord, as this word goes forth, we ask that you would do it in our hearts and in our lives. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we ask all of these things. And let everybody say, amen. Amen, amen. amen. This morning, as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance, I just want to speak to your hearts on the word, just commitment, commitment, commitment. I've taken note of the fact that in the last few years in particular, I've noted that churches seem to be depleted of committed Christians. Uh, in fact, most of the United States, most people claim to be Christians, but they don't show it by their attendance at church. They don't show it by getting involved in the ministry. You ask people to do things today, there is no commitment to Christ whatsoever. But yet they name the name of Christ as if everything is okay. The Bible tells us that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You look at any church, it seems as though there is anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of the people do most of the work in the church. Now that means that 15 people out of 100 carry the church, or 20 people out of 100. They are the ones that get in and sweep the church. They are the ones that make sure the air condition is working. They are the ones that give. And the other 80% uh, do little to nothing whatsoever. I ask myself the question today, and I ask you the question, what has happened to commitment? The Apostle Paul in this context, he was one that was filled with zeal. He was filled with so much zeal before he became a Christian. And I talked about this at the last funeral that, that, that I did and so forth. He had so much zeal uh, that he was not a Christian. He was a Pharisee and he was one that wanted to stamp out Christianity. But he had zeal for God, if you will, in his own way of thinking. Not recognizing the fact that Jesus was the one that was promised to come and save us from our sins. Commitment seems to be out of the window for many people today. In fact, the beginning of every year, we, many of us, make a commitment that we're going to change. We're going to change something about our lives. In other words, we make resolutions, if you will, about I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm a diet now. I've been wanting to lose this stomach or I want to lose weight uh, or I want to do something or I, I, I'm going to start running or I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to do something uh, and, 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 and uh, we may be committed for a week or two. Come February, we stop dieting. Come February, we stop exercising. Come February, we stopped everything that we said that we were committed to do. Am I right about it? I don't know about you, but you got, if you make a commitment, you make a vow, you ought to 
keep it. You ought to keep it because God is a God of commitment. In our text today, we find some interesting things uh, about what the Apostle Paul was saying, how he pressed on. You got to press on in spite of what happened in 2022. Some of us went through some stuff in 2022. Maybe you went through some health challenges. Maybe you went through some financial challenges. Maybe you went through some mental health problems or concerns. Or maybe you had other kinds of problems in your life with your children, your husband, your wife, or whatever the situation may have been. You had some challenges. But I tell you today, I want to leave you with four committed things that we ought to do right now. Four things that I want to share with you where we ought to be committed uh, for the new year and so that we can stick with it. I'm not going to ask you to commit to dieting. I'm not going to ask you to commit to losing weight. I'm not going to ask you to be committed to doing exercise or doing something that you always committed. But this is going to be a spiritual commitment that we are going to make today that I'm going to do better in my life in Christ. I stopped by here to tell you today that we need to be committed Christians, loving him with all of our hearts. But it shows through our actions. It shows through our behavior. It shows by the way we live our lives. And so, in the text today, in Philippians 3, verses 13 to 14, let me reread that in another version that said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, Lord have mercy, I'm forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's good advice. That's good advice, my brothers and sisters. And it has stood the test of time. Why? Why do I say this? I tell you, we don't have to live our lives imprisoned by our past. Some of us are still living in the past. All of us have failed in some way in our lives over the last year. Probably. We don't see our failures uh, recorded in history, but uh, 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 on TV or, or YouTube or uh, Facebook and so forth. But they are recorded in our hearts. We, we are recognized. For many of us, our failures are painful memories, painful memories of things that we experienced this last year. And maybe for you, it is a memory of how you failed in a relationship. Maybe you made some wrong decisions. And, and said or did things and that uh, affected or ended that relationship. And some of you who are parents probably know that you failed your children in some way. Or, or some of you children may have failed your parents in some way. Yes, you failed this past year. It is more than likely that many of us know that we failed ourselves also in some way. And all of us should know that in some way we have failed God. Are you committed today? Are you committed to Christ? Are you committed to doing what's right? Are you committed to living what's right? Instead of living your own way, but living for God and living the Christian life, the Christ-like life. I'm not talking about coming to church. That's part of it. But coming to church is just a little bit piece of it. Well, I'm talking about living a life that is pure, a life that is holy, a life dedicated to God, a life committed to God Almighty. See, what God's word is saying to us here in this text is that we must not allow ourselves to be bogged down by our past failures, by our past failure, that we do not have to dwell on our past so, 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 uh, so, that, so much that it stops us from moving forward in our lives and moving forward into our future that God has for us because God wants to do something special in your life. And I think that, the, that, that the, the, the start of the new year is a good time uh, for us to rise up to the challenges of doing the right thing right now. Being committed to the things that we've committed ourselves to, uh, to do. 
And I'm talking about if you make a resolution, then you try to stick with that resolution. But I want you to make this spiritual commitment unto the Lord. Past failures can cause you not to be committed. God is saying here in this word that he doesn't want you to go through your life branding yourself as a failure. Yes, Jesus Christ, he died on Calvary's cross. I tell you that, and, and when he died, you were forgiven. You don't, have to, you don't have to feel like you're a failure. You don't have to be a failure. When we become Christians, that forgiveness has already taken over our lives, and we have to recognize the fact that he has forgiven us, each and every one. And when we have received Christ's forgiveness, it allows us to forgive ourselves and also to forget our failures. Forget our failures. Maybe you need to do the right thing, thing this morning. And maybe you need to accept Jesus' forgiveness in your heart and in your life. And then also you need to forgive others. You need to forgive others. So the first one is forgiveness. Forgive, 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 forgive. We need to forgive. Um, may I say uh, forget our past failures. The second commitment that I'd like to say to you is commit yourself to give up your grudges. Give up your grudges. Let me say this to you. Any of you all ever seen the Smurfs? The Smurfs. They still come on. I used to watch it a lot. You know, when you raising kids, you kind of like uh, look at cartoons. You get all into it. You know, I got a little granddaughter now, and I find myself back into the cartoons. And some of them are real interesting. But one of the Smurfs really caught my attention. All of them really did. Papa Smurf and all of those different types of Smurfs. But the one that I want to bring to your attention is Grouchy Smurf. Grouchy Smurf, Grouchy Smurf, grumpy. Yeah, he was great. He was grumpy. He was always, and when he folded his arms and put and, and took those eyebrows and did them like made them go on the inside and frowned at you and so forth. Grouchy Smurf was getting ready to tell you. They said we having a birthday party, but and Grouchy Smurf will fold his arms and have a mean look on his face. I hate birthdays. Everything that you did, Grouchy Smurf didn't like. The only time, but it was interesting. It's interesting. You could just say, hey, let's go to the store. I hate going to the store. I hate this. He hated everything. It seemed like he hated everybody. But there was one that he did not hate. And guess what? He would, you could say, uh, Grouchy Smurf, we getting ready to uh, 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 go up in the, in, the, in the tree right here. And Papa Smurf going to come up there with, I hate going up in the tree. But I love Papa Smurf. That's the only thing that he would say in a positive way. Anybody know some scrouchy smurfs in your life? Oh, nothing is ever right. Every time you turn around, they got something negative to say. Got a frown on their face all the time. Always down and fold their arms. And you could do something nice for them, but yet they have nothing good to say about anything. I tell you, my brothers and see, my brothers and sisters, we need to come. If you are like that today, you need to get rid of your grouch, your grumpiness, your attitude, your disposition, and turn it around in 2023 and have a smile on your face every now and then. And stop being grumpy. Stop showing grudges toward others. Help me, Holy Ghost. I want you to listen to me just for a moment. What the Bible tells us in Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. I, I want you to understand something, my brothers and sisters. God, in, in, in these words, is challenging us directly and personally to give up grudges. Yes, give it up. A uh, grudge, my brothers and sisters, is a deep, uh, ongoing resentment that we cultivate in our hearts against someone. A grudge is an unforgiving spirit that leads to unforgiving attitudes and unforgiving actions. Now, I know you know that what I am talking about, my brothers and sisters. Harboring a grudge is about nursing a dislike for someone. I don't know about you, but grudges can destroy marriages. Grudges have destroyed or broke up families. Or grudges have ruined friendships and other relationships. And grudges have even split churches. Y'all don't hear me. How many church, church, church splits have come as a result? Because people cannot get along with one another. 
Oh, but we need to be honest with one another. We need to, when we confront problems in the church, we need to be able to talk about it because we all say that we're Christian. You believe your prayers are reaching God? I believe my prayers are reaching God. Somebody ain't praying, right? If we, have a, if we can't work it out, we can't work out our differences. Y'all don't hear me? I said grudges are, is wrong in the eyes of God. And if you're a grouchy person, if you're a grouchy smurf, then you need to turn that around. You need to give all of your concerns to God and give it up because that's what God is telling us to do. And I, stop, I, I just want you to know that it's important. Uh, there was a story about a man who, uh, who killed uh, a, a, a somebody by way of a bomb. Uh, a pipe, uh, some type of parcel bomb, and this couple, and uh, a week later, the couple that was responsible for this, they committed suicide. Why? Because they, were, they, were, they, they had a disagreement with this individual, and they, uh, but they stressed it too far. Uh, they had fallen out when they were in school together, and, and all of a sudden, uh, that grudge went so, so far, they decided they did not mean to kill him, but when he died in that situation, they couldn't take it, and a week later, they killed themselves. I tell you, don't nurse, don't, don't, don't nurse, rather, grudges. Let it go. Let it go. Give it to God. Let God deal with it. And God will deal with it. Oh, yes, yes, he will. Make no mistake about it. If, you, if we keep harboring the grudge, then it will eventually destroy you. It'll destroy me. And if, if it doesn't do it physically or uh, certainly it may do it for us emotionally, it may do it for us spiritually, it will make you a bitter and twisted person if you continue to carry on these grudges. Amen. Yes, indeed. Do you really want that to be part of the way that you're remembered? Somebody put on your tombstone, grouchy Reggie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you want to be remembered? Say, remember him? Oh, man, he was a grouch. He, he, was, he, he was whatever. Uh, but they have nothing good to say about you. Praise be to God. So Jesus told us about forgiving, forgiving in the scripture. You remember he talked about forgiveness in many, many instances. I heard Deacon Don not too long ago about uh, talking about these uh, judging and all these kinds of things. But God wants us to forgive. You remember uh, in the scripture where the scripture tells us that an unforgiven, about an unforgiving servant. He always, uh, you will, you'll always end up in prison anyway. You'll be in prison to your own unforgiving spirit. Don't you know when you don't forgive others, you feel like you're imprisoned? Hallelujah. That person might be going on about their business, doing their own thing. But guess what? You're still in prison to your unforgiving spirit. Yes, yes. That's what uh, 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 unforgiveness would do to you. God says to you in this word, don't sentence yourself to prison. No, no, don't do it. Set yourself free. Because he that the son is set free is free indeed. <laughs> yes, give up your grudges. Yes, forgive each other, whatever you may have against one another. And according to God's word, the way to forgive a grudge is to forgive. Forgive. Truly forgive. I'll tell you, I know it's hard sometimes, but you got to do it. It's that simple, my brothers and sisters. Notice what God's saying here. He, he, he isn't asking you to ignore whatever a, that the person has done to you. No, no. He isn't asking you to pretend that it didn't happen. He doesn't ask you to condone it, to pretend it, it doesn't matter. No, no. What God asks you to do is to forgive the grievance. That means you acknowledge it. How, how knowledge, how wrong and how painful uh, what they had done to you, what it was like and so forth. But you turn right around and you forgive them. You know what? I need to move on with my life. In 2023, I'm not going to nurse this grudge. I'm not going to let it keep me down. I'm not going to continue to let it hold me in this place because I need to move on. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God. If you want to move on in your life, if you want to be a better person, if you want God to move in a mighty way, then you've got to let all that, you've got to forget the past and you've got to get rid of those grudges. Did y'all hear what I said? you got to forget the past and move on Amen. with your life. Yes. Thirdly, two more. Commit yourself to restore your relationships. Commit yourself to restoring your relationships. How many relationships have been destroyed uh, for sometimes no apparent reason? You know, some people just love arguing. Uh, I, I, it's something I want to say, but I can't say it because, uh, but I want to say it this way. Let me say it this way. Now, some people act like they can't get together 
uh, 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 get along with one another unless they had a good argument. They, they got to argue because that's normal in their home or that's normal in their relationship. Uh, you know what? If I have to do that, I'd rather not have a relationship. I'd rather, not be, I'd rather be by myself than to be with somebody I got to argue with every day about everything. Nothing is ever right. You didn't cook the grits on, on, uh, on five. I told you to cook it on four. Uh, you didn't uh, do the bacon right. You burned it. Uh, you may I say you made it hard when I wanted it soft. Uh, with, uh, with, uh, 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 everything. It doesn't matter. Uh, you took this way to the store. I told you to go that way. All kinds of stuff. Some folk just enjoy argument after argument after argument. But, but, but uh, in relationships, it's important that we maintain relationships. Look what the scripture says in Romans 12 and 18. It says, if it be possible as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men. That's an important, play, the important uh, phrase here, as much as lie in you, not the other person, but in you, live at peace with everyone. Huh? What God is saying in this phrase, he's challenging us to do everything we can do to bring about peace in our relationships. The Lord wants you to do everything to restore your relationships. Some of us have dysfunctional families. We got dysfunctional relationships. And it may not be anything that you can do, but you can do everything you can. The Bible said, if it is possible, do everything you can to restore that relationship. Some relationships might have gone wrong in our lives because of what other people have done to us. And, uh, and, and uh, it may have, it might not, uh, they rather might not want the relationship restored. You can't do anything about that. But God understands that. God recognizes that. That is why he starts by saying, if it's possible. If it's possible. So let's be honest. Some of our relationships have gone wrong because of what we have done. Huh? I said some of our relationships have gone sour because of what we have done. Now, this is when God's word says, here, as far as it depends on you. Now, you can do something about that. If you made a relationship sour or you went and said some ugly things to your spouse or did some hurtful things toward that individual, then you can go back and apologize. Come on, somebody. Some folk, they won't say sorry if, if they rather go to hell than to say I'm sorry. Y'all don't hear me? Uh, church folk have a hard time saying I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. I'm wrong. Please, please. I just want to make up. But I stop by here to tell you it's important that you, as much as lie in you, that you do everything that you can to restore your relationship. We've said, uh, yes, we need to ask forgiveness if we need forgiveness. Because for the harsh words or the uh, cutting remarks or the things we've done to wound people's spirit. Yes, maybe God is saying to some of you that, uh, that this, uh, this change, uh, the change that he wants to see in your life this year will happen as a result of you trying to restore relationships. I'm so glad about it, what God does in our hearts and in our lives. Make no mistake about it, my brothers and sisters, it's hard. Uh, some of these things are hard to do that I'm talking about, but it's necessary. As the people of God, we should be willing to do whatever it takes to bring peace and tranquility among the people. Even in uh, people in your fa family, uh, uh, people on your job, praise God. Some folk get on your last nerve, but you can, you can do this. You can do this because you are a child of God. You are an example of what Jesus Christ is all about. When people see you, they see Jesus. Yes, sir, they see the Son of God. They see, some, they see the light shining, and they ought to see the light shining through the fact that you are making everything, you are doing everything you can to restore relationships, that you are forgiving that you don't hold grudges, and that you do everything that you possibly can to move forward. And finally, for 2023, what you want to do is commit yourself to turn back on your transgressions, turn back on your transgressions. Uh, there was a, a, a story that talked about the Civil War. Uh, the Civil War, it was an interesting fact that the Civil War was over. The Civil War was over. So for those of you who are history buff, I'm not a history buff. I didn't like history. But I see how important history is. But the Civil War was over, and uh, of course the slaves had been set free. And, uh, but some slaves decided to stay with their masters and to continue to do what they've been told. 
They were set free, but they, but they, they chose to stay as slaves. You see, the New Testament uh, says that is exactly how many Christians choose to live. Christ died to set you free, but you choose to still remain a slave. Y'all don't hear me? Uh-huh. But the Holy Spirit has given us the power, has given us power to be free. Uh-huh. Just like the former slaves uh, uh, in, during the Civil War, these slaves, many Christians still choose to obey their old master and the master of sin. Yes, sir. And I'm talking about folk that know Jesus. You still sin deliberately. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 12, let not sin. Therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust thereof. And that is the challenge for us today is that we will let go of sin. That we let go of the transgressions. That we let go of those things that have held us back. That we let go of everything that God dislikes. We ought to dislike what God dislikes. And God hates sin so we ought to hate sin. Y'all hear me? So when God tells us to let sin go, don't let it control your life, then you got to abandon it and let it go. Some of us need to let go of old relationships. Yes, sir, you are in a wrong relationship right now. Then you need to let it go. Now, don't come here and say, Pastor, you told me to leave the man who was paying my rent. But I stopped by here to tell you, if it's wrong, it's wrong. You need to get right with God. Make peace with God. Bible teaches us about those besetting sins. And when they talk about those besetting sins, now some sins we don't have a problem letting go. Maybe you used to smoke. I'm not saying smoking is a sin per se. But if that's a sin to you, you know that it's killing your body, then, then, then you stop that. Oh, you, maybe you stop drinking. Maybe you stop doing uh, because you had a habit of doing it and it was destroying your life. So you decide, decided to stop and the Lord has given you victory. But there may be some other things in your life that you've had a hard time letting go of. And you're saying, uh, Lord, I, 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 I need your help. Or maybe you don't want to let it go because that guy, he makes you feel good. Or uh, that woman, uh, she's right for me. But has she, has she been approved by God? Has, she, has he been approved by Almighty God? Those besetting sins, those things that we have a hard time letting go. Maybe it's unforgiveness in your spirit. Maybe it's something that you like to watch, pornography. Praise be to God. And you know that's a lustful situation. You're having a hard time letting it go. Those besetting sins, those sins that we have a hard time letting go. I get angry, Pastor. I get angry. And when I get low, over in that, in that zone, uh, I got to calm down before. You know, give to Jesus he'll take it yes sir those things we have a hard time let it go let go and let God and let him have his way he wants to change your life he wants to change your heart and in 2023 we ought to move to another level get rid of sin in your life uh, get rid of the grudges in your life get rid of all of those things that are affecting you in a negative way and let us press on toward the goal of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus and watch God take you to another level he wants to take you to another level he wants to take you higher in him he wants to make you whole again he wants to fill your family with love and and joy and peace in your home yes sir you may have been arguing this past year but in 2023 i'm committed i am committed to not do any arguing in my home if an argument start then you put a stop to it if if negativity comes into your home with your children you put a stop to it and stop it right now i tell you we serve a mighty god and he can do it right now. Is there anybody here know that God can do anything? I heard that God can do a miracle. That God perform miracles. And he can perform a miracle in your spirit. He can do it right now. All you have to do is ask him. And he'll come to your rescue. And he'll come and meet you right where you are. He'll do it. Inside of you. Is there, can I get a witness? I said, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. And he'll do it. He'll do it right now. He'll do it. He'll do it inside of you. Praise be to God. So I just want to leave this commitment, this uh, notion with you today. So commit yourself to forget your, uh, to, to forget your past, your failures. Uh, commit yourself to give up your grudges. 
and commit yourself to restore your relationships and commit yourself uh, to turning back on your transgressions, those sins in your life that you have a hard time letting go of. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. Everyone stand right where you are. We open the doors of the church. If it's one today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then we invite you to come right now to receive Jesus, the Lord of glory. Then he will, he will come into your life. He'll forgive you of your sins, and he'll do it right now. All he asks, you say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I've done some terrible things. So have we all in many ways. But he'll forgive you of any and every sin in your life and he'll receive you as his child all you have to do is ask him to forgive you and he'll become your savior he'll become your lord you can do that right now if that's you someone listening online if that's you we give you a phone number we have someone to talk with you about your commitment to christ the down phone number is 919-552-9150 you can call and someone will talk to you about your salvation if that's someone today, then we invite you to come right now to receive Jesus the Christ as your Savior, as your Lord. Perhaps there's another who uh, need to belong to a church in this community. You've moved in this area or you have been belonging here a while, but you don't belong to a church. You can come by way of letter from your former church or you can come on your Christian experience. We're going to give you the opportunity to, to respond to this gospel call. We're going to give you a minute just to, to respond. You can do the same on the phone. Just call us and let us know you want to be a part of First Baptist. Uh, the choir is going to sing to give you the opportunity to respond to this gospel call. the Lord is someone if anyone desires prayer just lift your hands right where you are the Lord the Lord sees your hands he sees your hearts praise God you can take your hands down all of us need work and folks to your surprise so do I we all have something in our hearts and in our lives that need to change we all need to grow Maybe the word that I said to you today doesn't fit into your experience. But put your own word there. Make a commitment to stop procrastinating. Make a commitment to stop putting off going to school, to college, getting a degree, the high school diploma. You might be 50. I want my high school diploma. Get it. Go get it. Make a commitment to be a better person for God. Whatever it takes, be committed. God knows why you raised your hand. He understands. He knows what's in your heart. Let us bow and pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, may we renew our commitment to you in every way 
may we be committed to learn how to control our tongue in the right situations committed to forget our personal failures of the past may we be committed to give up our grudges against others may we be committed O oh Lord to restore relationships the part that we can control may we be committed to turn it our backs on our transgressions, the sins in our lives. Now, Lord, people raise their hand for a reason, and you know all about it. You understand it. You see them through and through. They could very well be standing in proxy for another person, someone that needs Christ in their life. They could be standing for themselves in a relationship that needs fixing. And we know that you are the great fixer of all of our hurts and pain. You're able to take away the sorrow, the disappointments, and everything that's negative in our lives. Change it. Turn it around. We ask that you would move in a mighty way. God, by way of your spirit, shake us up. Make us and mold us into the people that you would have us to be. We do honor you, Lord, for being God, the God of our lives, for taking over us and forgiving us of all of our sins. Have your way, Lord, in our spirits, have your way touch us like never before and let 2023 be a year of victory a year where we will experience God on a new frontier a year of a new era a year where we will experience prosperity in Christ hallelujah year where we honor God and worship God and lift up the name of God in every way in our lives and Lord may we may we be granted the petitions of our hearts right now do it for us Lord this is our prayer we ask it all in the name of Jesus the Christ our Lord we indeed do pray and let everybody say amen amen you may take your seats Amen. This time we're going to ask the ushers to come forward. We're going to take our offering. And while uh, we are doing that, we want to remember we love for you to support First Baptist. For those of you that are not present with us today, we always appreciate the support of our friends online. You can do it by online or you can do it by U.S. mail. Uh, we ask that you can, if you go online, you can do it through PayPal. Uh, by uh, or you can uh, send it through the mail. You would send it through First Baptist Fuquay. That's F U Q U A Y, uh, P O Box uh, four three two, Fuquay Varina, North Carolina two seven five two nine. You can send a check or a money order to the attention of offerings, and we certainly would appreciate it. At this time, the choir is going to sing a song as we uh, take up our offering at this time.
you for a wonderful day today. Thank you for a wonderful uh, service also. Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. And Father God, we just ask that you would help us to just go out into the streets, the highways, the byways, the grocery stores, the shopping center, and evangelize in this year and help us to fill this this house with with new people, which the Lord is if it's your will. Yes. And, and Father, I ask that you will bless this uh, gifts that was taken up today. Yes. Bless those that gave, bless those who were that weren't able to give. Yes. May this uh gifts be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here. Yes. Yes. And Father God, I just like to wish everybody a, a happy twenty twenty three and a happy new year. announcement I forgot to mention Bible study it did I uh, starts back up on uh, Wednesday the 11th uh, we in James chapter 5 uh, start with verse 1 please join us for Bible study and um, uh, two other things right quick uh, thank God for the musician as well as the choir today for the music and, and they've done a wonderful job uh, with the voices that they have and also I don't want to forget I saw him walking around our security Andre uh, Barbie thank you so much for your leadership in that regard can we thank God for all of these individuals that have provided services for the church thank you so much uh, we're ready to go home at this time and if nothing else captures our attention uh, uh, let me just do a blessing as we go father we thank you once again for all of your many blessings may we be committed this year in every way to please you and now may the grace of God the love of Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with each of us now henceforth and forevermore God bless you. Have a uh, happy new year.